Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv, and this is an iState News Watch special. Michael Bennett targeted for being black or hashtag non state agent lives matter. So, today we're going to talk about the Michael Bennett incident where, well, let's just get it. To it. Michael, what Michael Bennett's encounter with the police tells us about the reality of power that we all face every day. Uh, the Michael Bennett incident in which the Seattle Seahawks defensive end was arrested after the Mayweather-McGregor fight reveals something far more troubling than whether Bennett was targeted for being black. Now, now, now don't get me wrong. Being targeted by police for being black would be a major problem in and of itself. But so often these cases of potential abuse of blacks by police end up producing conversations and debates that actually fail to get to the root of an, if, an issue that affects not just blacks, but everyone and anyone that might come against a police officer who has decided for whatever reason that he or she is the absolute authority and you are the absolute slave who must obey without question or else you'll face potentially lethal force in response. Now, before I dive deep into this whole case, I want to throw out a few caveats here. Uh, first of all, when it comes to incidents that may reveal police abuse, the information coming out is often uh, not exactly reliable. Uh, be it the story the cops tell or the story that the alleged vi victims tell. So while I'll cover what is known about the case, I won't be talk taking a definitive stance on what actually happened. Rather, I will be using this incident to highlight the root issue that is constantly being missed every time one of these incidents comes to the fore. So let's go over what we know so far, as well as what the parties involved in this incident are saying or, or not saying. First of all, let's go back in time just a little bit to a recent move made by Bennett in connection to the Colin Kaepernick, pro Kaepernick protests. Uh, on August 13th, 2017, just two weeks before the incident that occurred the night or rather early morning of the Mayweather McGregor fight on well, it was scheduled for August 26th, but it ended up August 27th is the official date early morning. Michael Bennett made headlines when he decided to sit during the national anthem in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. Bennett stated uh, in, in this uh, 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 released statement, uh, at least in part, I, I just want to see people have the equality that they deserve, and I want to be able to use this platform to continuously push the message and keep finding out how unselfish we can be in society, how we can continuously love one another and understand that people are different. And actually, this this statement is about uh, that he released was not not the big statement, the reason that we're doing this report today. This is the statement that he made about why it is that he that he, he took the knee during during the national or he wouldn't stand for the national anthem. Now in his statement, he went out of his way to validate the state, the military. He said, I want to make sure people understand I love the military. My father was in the military. I love hot dogs like any other American. I, I didn't know that 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 was a test of uh, loyalty, if you like hot dogs, but okay. Bennett's protest gesture reveals a man who is not fundamentally addressing the root, the core problem that would lead to the confrontation with the police he would have on August 27th. This is a man who sees in the state a solution creator, even though the state itself is the one behind the very problems he is addressing some of which cannot be addressed by force of gun, which is actually the only real power that the state has. He was sending a message, but the message was not that the state was doing too much, but that it wasn't doing enough to, and I'm going to put this in quotes, help people 
just get along better, a role that the state could never fulfill. I'm, I'm looking for Ralph Wiggum to show up at this point with his, I'm helping, because that's whenever the state says that they're going to help, you should you should hear and see Ralph Wiggum in your, in your head saying, I'm helping. Now, this takes us to the incident that happened on August 27th. According to Bennett, he was walking in a crowd after the fight when he heard what sounded like gunshots. Bennett then claimed the police swarmed him for no known reason other than he was black. They pointed guns at him, even threatening at one point to blow his head off. Bennett claimed that uh, one officer hammered his knee violently into his back before he was forced into a police car. Now, he was not under arrest, but he was still detained until the police checked his identity and confirmed that he wasn't a suspect. Uh, Bennett stated, they apparently realized I was not a thug, common criminal, or ordinary black man, ordinary black man, but Michael Bennett, a famous professional football player. So let's 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 look uh, let's look at this uh, video here, which TMZ Sports posted. Uh, the video shows Ben Bennett getting handcuffed, and he was saying, "I wasn't doing nothing, man." I was here with my friends. They told us to get out. Everybody ran. Can you answer my question, sir? It's it's just a, a brief little thing here. Let's just let's just play it. And again, this is from TMZ Sports. Sir! Can you ask my question, sir? Wait. Okay, man. Get both together. And there you go. Oh, hold on. Sir, I got you. Why don't we get so it? I got you! Fuck it up! 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 So there's the video from TMZ Sports. So Bennett has stated that he will be suing the police department over this incident. The Las Vegas Police Department has yet to release a statement as of the writing of this article and the creation of this video. And yes, by the way, this is an article which I wrote, which I am uh, somewhat going off of here. You can find that article linked in... Uh, in the description below, I'll also put a link to the article in the comment section as well. So Bennett released a statement about the incident, which has since gone viral, which is why we're here to talk about it. In it, he said, I have always held a strong conviction that protesting or standing up for justice is just simply the right thing to do. This fact is unequivocally, without question why, before every game, I sit during the national anthem. Because equality doesn't live in this country, and no matter how much money you make, what job title you have, or how much you give, when you are seen as a an N-word, you will be treated that way. And you can read the full statement uh, uh, in the article link that is in the description below. Uh, it contains the the full statement that he released so you can read it and judge for yourself now to be sure being treated equally by authority is certainly better than not being treated equally but what bennett has failed to see what kaepernick fails to see what so many of the social justice equal rights crowd fails to see is that the problem is not being treated equally by authority but being on a fundamentally unlevel playing field with this mystical, mythical entity called authority. As I, as I stated above uh, earlier in this video, and above if you're reading the article, the actual facts of the story re remain to be seen. And, and, I'm, I'm not, I mean, his story could be totally dead on. He could be totally telling the truth. There could be a story that emerges that is radically different from the one Bennett tells us. But, but, but for, the, for the sake of this video, let's just assume that everything that Bennett said was true. 
I have absolutely no problem whatsoever uh, believing what Bennett said. It, 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 it seems, seems perfectly reasonable, even, you know, with that video, it somewhat backs it up. Even the part that claims he was targeted because he was black. I have little doubt that people who look a certain way face a greater chance of being targeted by more aggressive police than other people do. Having black skin in America, I believe, increases your chance of falling prey to one of these authoritarian lords of the batch. The Black Lives Matter group didn't just emerge out of a myth, folks. Being black in America does mean facing greater potential threats to your safety at the hands of people with this authority. An authority, sadly, Bennett has already demonstrated he is willing to acknowledge. Now, that statement, I don't have absolute proof. Uh, and I, 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 that might not actually be a correct statement. But <laughs> if I were a betting man, I would certainly put my money on the side of that statement being true. And I would feel pretty confident that the statement is true. And therein lies the rub, the rub I have with Bennett. Uh, with Kaepernick even, and actually even with most of the folks that identify as being part of the Black Lives Matter movement, not all, but most, most of these folks are not addressing at all the root of the problems they're identifying. The reality of power that exists between a non-authority and an authority, a non-state agent, in other words, this is why if you look at the article, you see, and uh, as part of this title, the hashtag is non-state agent lives matter. So the root of the problem is the reality of power that exists between a found authority and an authority. If Bennett's story is true, then there's absolutely no reason that this man should have, uh, shouldn't have the fundamental right, I'll put right in quotation marks, to protect himself from a threat to his well-being. He was threatened. He was essentially kidnapped. He was assaulted. But he had little power to choose to defend himself. And even if he were armed, even if he only faced one guy and in that immediate physical reality had a potential force of action greater than the one he was facing because of the nature of the authority before him, Bennett still faced a significant disadvantage in the reality of power. Had Bennett decided to defend himself from this assault, he would bring a whole army against him. And once that army confronted him, the choice for Bennett would be to die in a hail of bullets or be kidnapped for years, possibly for the rest of his life. And these folks, including Bennett, are, are not actually addressing the root because, and here's, here's the dirty little secret, because they want to be the root. They dream of a day when the mechanism of the coercive enterprise, the state, can be used to protect their interests from people that belong don't belong to their tribe uh and, and I'm, I'm not saying i'm not i'm not going down the road of defining what 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 the tribe is and i don't think that the the, the tribe that uh bennett and the, the folks in and i'll say in kind of leaning in the black lives matter camp it's it's not the black tribe that that they they that they necessarily uh want to uh uh, elevate above others, although some do, but I, I can't speak for all of them. I, I'm speaking in the general sense of tribe. The tribe, we, we belong to multiple tribes, some of them voluntary, some of them involuntary. And Bennett and others like him, they have a whole, they have a whole mesh, mesh of tribes that they would belong to, that they would favor over other tribes. Uh, for instance, Bennett has has no problem supporting a military that has gone out into the world to spread freedom using bombs, murdering hundreds of thousands of people. So he, he belongs to an American tribe, and he's, he's obviously for perpetuating that American tribe, even at the cost of other tribes. At the end of the day, Bennett is, is not really a hero standing up against the man. He's a power player looking to one day be the man or at least have the man on his side. 
So long as we humans continue to use the coercive enterprise prize model of governance, I, a.k.a. the state, there will always be unequal distributions of the wrath of authority. Now, today, Bennett belongs to a tribe that, that I believe faces that unequal wrath. Tomorrow, that unequal wrath may be faced by different tribes. And I... I don't remember who said this, and I can't find the attribution, but this quote bears repeating right now. If the state didn't exist, racism would simply be a bad idea. It's because the state exists that racism is more than a bad idea. It actually, it, it fundamentally hurts people. People. It is the power of the state, the coercive enterprise, that makes bias a threat to the person or persons that might be the unfavorable target of that bias or gives other people an advantage wrought by force of the state gun over others. The greater the power of the state, the coercive enterprise, the higher the cost of being in an unfavorable group and the greater the reward for being in a favored group. The greater the power of the individual, the greater the power of free associations, the less the bias of the state, the coercive enterprise affects us, for better or for ill. Now, I am all for not being favored, okay? I don't want to belong to any tribe that is favored. Well, I can't say I, I don't want to belong to any tribe, but I don't, I don't want any tribe I belong to, whether I belong to it voluntarily or involuntarily, to be favored by the state. But I'm also not for being in the unfavorable camp. In other words, I don't want to belong. I don't, I, I don't want the tribes that I belong to, whether I belong to them voluntarily or involuntarily, to be the target uh, like tribes are today. And, and some of the tribes I belong to, I, I, I feel are targeted. And some of the tribes I belong to are not targeted. Uh, Michael Bennett, Colin Kaepernick, Black Lives Matter, alt-right, Many Trump supporters, many Democrats, many Republicans, they all have one thing in common. They favor using the tools of the state, the course of enterprise, to protect their tribes and punish other tribes. Now, you need not favor the dismantling of the state completely to agree with me that this state, the coercive enterprise of America, has far too much power concentrated in the hands of far too few people. Raising the potential damage that bias in the hands of, quote, authority can do to whatever tribe, whatever group, whatever individual finds themselves in that unenviable position. The root of the problem, the problem of, uh, the, the root problem of Bennett's is not racism. It's, it's not inequality. I mean, those are problems, certainly. But the, they're not the root. The root is the ever-growing power of the state, the coercive enterprise. And sadly, he's not addressing that, even as in his encounter with authority may very well illustrate just what an existential threat this growing authority is becoming in all of our lives. I'll end with the hashtag. Non-state agent lives matter. Okay, so that's the report, folks. I look forward to reading your comments, and uh, I'll try to interact as, as, as much as I possibly can. If you like this video, be sure that you like, share, comment, and above all else, subscribe to this channel. And if you're going to subscribe to this channel, dude, you might as well hit the bell. Hit that bell so you can get the latest notifications when we have a new video going up. But for now, this is Paul Gordon of iState TV saying, see you later.